Hey guys, it's Kaylor. In today's video, we're taking a look at Anima. With Anima, you can take a Figma, Adobe XD, or Sketch design and convert it to code with just a few clicks. You can build out interactions and responsive prototypes, and it exports as developer-friendly code. So I've partnered up with Anima today to dive into Figma, and we're gonna take a Figma design and convert it to code with Anima. We take a look at my project file here in Figma. It's just a simple coming soon page, asking people to input their email, and they'll get notified when the site officially launches. Then I've got this nice 3D illustration here on the side. I actually found this on the community tab on Figma, so I'll credit and link that down in the description. And then I've got some nice color in the background with a little bit of noise over top of it just to blend it into the white and make it look pretty cool. So that is my design. So the first thing I need to do is get the Anima plugin. So I'll just go to the plugins and type in Anima and just get that installed. So now I'll just open that up. I'm just gonna select my frame, right click, and then go down to plugins and select Anima. You can also go up top, click plugins and go to Anima from there. But first thing we need to do here in the plugin is we need to create a new project. So I'll hit select a project, create a new one, and I'll give it a name. For me, I'll go with personal, but you also have the option to select your team if you have one, and then you can create the project. Now it's created, let's sync this to the project. So now that we've synced that up, let's preview this in the Anima web app. So this is what a project in the Anima web app looks like. It's already generated our simple website here for us, and we have various options in the UI. So let's take a look at the code. It's gonna ask me for my framework. So you have React, Vue, and HTML. I'm gonna go with HTML and continue with that. And you can see when I select various elements on the screen, it's gonna give me the HTML and CSS down here below. So this actually is a fully coded website already just by setting the project up that quickly. So now that we've got this set up, let's go back to Figma. And in here, anytime we make changes, we can hit the sync button and that will push the update to our project. We also have the option to preview this so we can preview it in Figma. And then once we have what we like, then we can sync it to our project in the web app. So let's set up the preview now. The first time you do this in any Figma project, you'll need to grab the shared link. So you can go up to the button here in the top right, click on that and then copy that link. And then we'll just paste that in that field and hit connect. And so now we have the ability to preview it without having to go to the web app. And then when I'm ready to sync my project, I can do so from here and I can also get code from here as well. Let's close that for now. So now that we have our initial Anima project created, you can take a look at the plugin and see we can do a lot of things. We can add hover effects, entrance animations, we can even embed code. But the first thing I wanna do is make my design responsive. So I can go to the responsive tab and we have two options. We can set our breakpoints, which we need to create the frames in Figma first, and we can set up constraints. So I'm gonna to toggle on use Figma constraints. That tells Anima to pay attention to the constraints that I've set up here in Figma. So for example, this beta coming soon will constrain to the top and the right side of the browser because that's what I've told it to do here in Figma. And if I grab my desktop version frame and I actually start to scale this, you'll see how it will actually behave in the browser because this is showcasing how my constraints are set up. So this looks pretty good for me. So I don't need to make any more changes to my constraints. And the reason I set up my constraints first is it makes it easier to create the breakpoints for the design. So I can simply copy this desktop version, just drag it down. And since I have my constraints set up, when I scale this into a tablet width, most of my elements are in the position they need to be. I just have to adjust a few things, like in this case, this image, and for mobile, I might have to change the font size. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So here are my three breakpoints that I've created of my design. So now that I have these, we can go into the Anima app and under responsive, I'll just click and drag to grab all three of my frames or I can shift click on the title to grab all three and then hit the plus next to breakpoints. Anima will detect that they are desktop, tablet and mobile and their size is listed here. And then I can hit save. And now if we go into the preview, we now have these three devices at the top. So we have our desktop version. We can swap to the tablet version and then down to the mobile and take a look at them. And then I'll just go ahead and sync that to my project. And now when we take a look at this in the web app, we now have the desktop, tablet, and mobile. And we can also take a look at how it responds responsively with those current breakpoints. 
So now that we have our design set up in Anima and we have it responsive, I wanna start adding some of these interactions into our design. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop version. And the first thing I wanna do is actually be able to grab someone's email address. So the first thing we gotta do is just click on our text here and we need to set this up as a text input. So I'll just set that up. And from the dropdown, we have different options. I'm gonna select email and it automatically grabs the placeholder text from what's inside that text box, which is nice. And then I'm gonna set that to a required field and hit save. If we go ahead and preview this, you'll see I can now start typing in this input field. So now I need to adjust the width of this element to fill up this text box. So I'll just go in here and drag that over. And so you can see that looks a little bit nicer and we'll hit close on that. And now let's set up a submit button. So I'll just grab this notify me grouping and then we'll go over here and hit submit button. And we have two options. We can email this somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna choose. Or you can also set this to a downloadable spreadsheet. At the bottom, you can set up the on success and failure. For now, I'm just gonna leave it at this page. So it'll just refresh this page once we click this button. So I'll just input an email here and then hit save. And so now here in the Anima web app, if I put in an email and then I'll select notify me. Now we're redirected back to this page. And I just checked my email client off screen here and I actually did get an email with that email address that I put in, that nice test email. So it actually works and functions and grabs people's email address. So back here in Figma, let's also set up a hover interaction on this button. So I'll go up to hover effects, click that plus, we got various different things to choose from. I'm gonna go with grow just cause that's the simplest and easiest thing to do here. And we'll set it to ease in and out and 0.2 seconds is fine. Let's save on that. And we can view this in the preview this time. And you'll see when I hover over this, we get this nice grow effect. Looks pretty cool. One thing you'll notice here, if I go to the tablet or mobile view, that button will not grow on the hover. So you have to set up each one of these interactions on the various different views. Same thing with my input field, I would need to set that up as well. So just make sure that you're aware of that so that your interactions don't break on your different breakpoints. So for my design, I'll add one more interaction here. I'll just grab this image and let's add an entrance animation. For this one, let's select one of these moves. Let's see what move left does. I'm gonna go with move right. And then we'll set that to ease in and out. Set a delay of 0.5 and then a duration of 0.5 as well. And you can choose whether you want this to begin on scroll into view. For me, I'm not gonna do that. And then you can view the CSS down here at the bottom and we'll just click save. So let's go to our preview. And you can see my animation slides in. It looks pretty cool. And so now I'm gonna go through and make sure that my interactions are set up for the tablet and mobile version and then I'll sync that to my project. I've synced up my Anima project. I have Anima app open here in my browser. And at this point, I'm ready to either export this as code or share this with my team. You can share this with this button here in the top right. You can go to the comment section and your team can come in and add comments to this. And you can make sure that everyone's on board with this website and how it looks. You can also grab code snippets by going to the code tab selecting individual elements like this div, for example, and I can get all the information, copy and paste this from here. I can also grab assets like this image and I can download them right here from Anima. So you can easily send this off to a developer. And once again, you can finally export this as code. So up here you can export the current selection, the current screen or the full project, and you can download that as a zip file. Lastly, if you go to your project, so you can click here on the name, you can click the settings tab and you can go to public link. You can create a public link, give it a subdomain. So it'll be a subdomain dot animaapp.io. So here I've called mine fig hire, and then you can save those settings. So if I copy this link and using that link, you can preview your website and see what it looks like. You can see it's even responsive. It's scaling to my browser width. And also I'll have the link to the website I created with Anima in today's video down in the description below if you'd like to take a look at the live coded website for yourself. So that's it for today's video. That is taking a look at Anima and how you can take a design file in something like Figma, Adobe XD, or Sketch and turn it into a fully coded website with full interactions and it's responsive in just a few minutes. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks to Anima for sponsoring it and making this video possible. Check them out with the link at the top of the description. 
Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Check out these videos for more design-related content. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.